Hello everyone, it's Belladonna and Weepsy again. Madam Weeps is still reclined nice and lovely on her ravioli, pink ravioli heating pad. Just be, oh look at that lazy baby, now she wants her belly scratched. My goodness, such a hard life you have. Spoiled freaking rotten. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you some more about some recent acquisitions. I should do all the work and this puppy will just sit like a baby. Oh, stretch it out, stretch it out. All right, so uh, we talk a lot about music, and films and things like that here. But there are other things that I find every now and then I like to acquire, and they come in different forms. So we're going to talk a bit about those. As you know, I'm a big Depeche Mode fan. This is a, a single of the Strange Love, originally done in 1988. This is in 1992, I suppose re-release of this with various versions on it. You have Strange Love, you have Pimp on here, Agent Orange, Strange Love, Blind Mix, Pimp again or whatever, Strange Love, Pain Mix and Midi Mix, lots of mixes of Strange Love. Strange Lies and Strange Love. Now that's a great song, Strange Love. The original album, Music for the Masses, awesome album. I like to find things like this. You don't often see them as much. Just a single, no big deal, or a little whatever you want to call it, a little special release. But I like to have them. I used to always collect them. There's certain things like Depeche Mode, Skinny Puppy, Frontline Assembly, and so on. When I see them, I grab them because I just like to have them in my collection. Now, I also have an interesting thing to mention here. Now, I mentioned Skinny Puppy, my personal favorite band. We've talked about their albums and whatnot. I've talked extensively about them because I just do. I don't shut up. This is a very interesting book. Uh, Jolene Siana. I don't know if I'm saying a name right. Go Ask Ogre. You can see that all right there. This is a book, I believe you can get this on Amazon and whatnot. So this young woman, well, when she was a young woman, she's older now, back in the 80s, she became a fan of Skinny Puppy very early on when she was a teenager. She would go to the different shows and whatnot, was a very big fan. And she would write letters to Nivik Ogre, the front man of Skinny Puppy. And she would send him these really kind of personal sounding letters came to know him a bit I know there was a po I think she's the one that bailed them out of jail when they got thrown in jail for what someone said was like mutilating a dog on the stage and it was it was not it was a fake dog chode child whatever his name was she would send him like artwork and whatnot and on her envelopes alone the artwork she would do on them was beautiful she was really quite talented for such a young woman I guess if, if you read this, she had a, a lot of troubles in life and whatnot. And it seems like her letters to him was sort of a strange kind of lifeline. Now, interestingly, he kept them all, like in a shoebox. And one day gave them to her, and she'd wondered why he'd kept them all. He's like, because, so you could see them again one day. Amazing when you stop and think about that. You know, she sent him all of these things, and he kept them. How amazing is that? Go Ask Ogre, Confessions of a Death Rock Cutter. It's really, really sweet and interesting in its own right. The fact that he kept all of her freaking letters. Everything about Skinny Puppy is awesome, in my opinion. And this is no exception. Go Ask Ogre by Jolene Siana. Check it out if you can. I believe, like I said, you can pick it up on Amazon. Oh dear, I just smooshed you with Go Ask Ogre. She said, wake up, Madam Weeps. You're supposed to be working. This is very cool. I think this is about a year ago. 2020 this was released. Now I love comic books and I love graphic novels very much. I may get into that more later. My love of comics and such. So this is Bowie, the graphic novel. Here we have artwork. Michael Allred, Steve Horton, Laura Allred. Forward by Mr. Neil Gaiman. My goodness. And you have in here Stardust, Ray Guns and Moonage Daydreams. And it's got a lot of really cool artwork in it, so the, the cover's very nice. And you can see it has that kind of artwork in it. Very cool, very vibrant in color. A lot of different representations of Bowie, and different people throughout his career. It's really just a lot of fun, really well put together. This is one, I think, like I said, about a year ago it was released, so you should be able to find this. If you're a Bowie fan, and if you're a fan of... Uh, like Neil Gaiman's work and whatnot, because, you know, even though he didn't do this, similar artwork, and he does the foreword on this. 
very beautiful. The pictures are cool. I mean, just a lovely sort of tribute to Mr. Bowie. I don't know how accurate it is. I know time periods are... Here he is with Christopher Lee hanging out Dracula himself. It's sort of a fantasy. It's, it's reality, but fantasy. It's just played up, I think, for a lot of fun. There he is with Alex from Clockwork Orange. So many great things in here. I was just really excited about this. I love David Bowie, of course, and, you know, for so many reasons. And, you know, I know he's passed now, but... Is him, Lou Reed, people like that. These are the legends that make everything you do about music and art often worthwhile. They're inspirational in so many ways. Fascinating people. And he had so many, many wonderful milestone things he did in his life. I mean, from music, film. I mean, there is, there's a picture of him from the labyrinth. There is Jareth. There's, he did, again, he was, in, he was in Twin Peaks briefly. Briefly, there he is with Agent Cooper. Look at that. Twin Peaks. I'm a huge, huge fan of Twin Peaks. Beautifully done. If you get your hands on this one, you should. Again, I love comics and all that cool stuff. Graphic. Don't you sneeze at me. You big baby. Graphic novels, all that sort of thing. Where are you going? I mean, everybody's got to go sometime, and I... It was sad the way he had to go. Probably a little too soon. But, you know, when you lose an artist like David Bowie, you lose something. Yes, we have all the memories. We have wonderful tribute things like this to him. We have the music, the films. But when you lose someone like that, it makes you wonder where we're going now. So I think, even though these are separate, they are sort of the same. The way that music inspires people. Go Ask Over, David Bowie. They're different. They're not so different as you might think. If you get a chance, check these out. They're very cool. So I guess we'll sign off for now. So Madame Weeps can get back to laying in the ravioli and having a big sleep. What do you think? Does that sound fun to you? All right, everyone. Bye for now. It was a dream. We live inside a dream. And it's raining post-toasties. Hell, God, baby, damn, no!